those changes usually happen gradually, and they've been happening gradually since really the great financial crisis. I think you're right. It's about education. And I think that's all we can do is like is present yeah. different views of different things from different perspectives. But I think I often say to people, look, OK, I had a guy just sold his business. He said, what do we do with all my all my cash? It's in the in, in, in pounds in the bank, which could be any currency. It doesn't matter. So I said, well, OK, just think of it as think of all your asset classes, whatever they are. I don't even need to know what they are, but your various asset classes. One of them is cash. Hang on, that's you're going to lose ten percent this year in investing that in the bank. Now, the bail-ins aside, I'm mean, not scaring you with, with, with the bail-in potentials because if the, one of those banks goes down because the derivative market collapses, uh, you could lose all your money. But but essentially, it's an asset class. So bearing in mind that anything, I mean, if I pick, touch this cup, it will cost. It doesn't mean the cup is costing more. No, the cup has always been the same price. It's just cost more pounds or dollars to buy the same cup. Same with your house. Oh, I, went, I made 20% on my house in this. No, you didn't. The house is the house. It costs 20% more dollars to buy your house. So, and I think, you know, we look back to 1913 and uh, a barrel of oil cost 22 ounces of gold. Um, now, 110 years later, it costs 24 ounces of gold. Yet the price is what? You know, so, you know, it just, it goes to show you. Um, it's about any real tangible thing, your, your table you're touching. It's going to, it's actually going to cost more dollars next year, the year after. So I just say to people, yeah, be careful where you place your money. And if you think that you're happy to lose 10%, a year or probably more actually and you go to the supermarket is it 10 percent? i'd say it's more like 20 percent. but you know what do you think well I, I think a lot of folks have seen those charts you know especially since 1971 when uh nixon closed the gold window the the income disparities specifically in the u.s the, the net worth and wealth disparity in the u.s has just widened and widened and widened just because of that if you've got assets and you can keep up with inflation and that devaluation, then you're, you know, you're feeling or seeming to be doing OK. It's those that don't, you know, and here in the U.S., I mean, two thirds of the population doesn't even have a thousand dollars in the bank. You know, they're the ones that are, um, you know, that are, you know, just endlessly being squeezed by all of this. Um, you know, and, and Andy, it, 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 one of the things that and I wanted to make, I just wanted to ask you this, uh, because I don't, I don't I, before we wrap up or anything like that, I just wanted to make sure I asked you. When the last time I spoke with you, um, you had talked about this notion of the BRIC country starting to price commodities in gold. Um, I, I I don't know how much more you've heard about that. I I had spoken a couple of days before. I, you may remember me telling you this. I talked to I'd spoken with Ronnie Sturfula, the in gold. Re Have you ever had Ronnie on here? Um, no, I haven't, but I should do. You should. Well, especially, you know, his that In Gold Retrust comes out in May. So he'll get pretty busy beginning next month. I don't know if he'll, but he, I mean, he's such a smart guy. Anyway, I was talking to Ronnie and uh, one day and he said he was, he was reminding me of uh, U.S. Secretary, Treasury Secretary Connolly in the 60s or the late early 70s, you know, famous for saying the dollar is our currency, but it's your problem, right? And how the mantra going forward now is going to be they are our commodities and they are your problem uh, from all these producing countries. And it was I think the next day I spoke with you and he said and you said, yeah, I've been hearing about, you know, this notion of these commodity producing countries pricing them in grams of gold. Have you heard? Can I, I just would love to have you tell me more about that. I bet everybody listening would benefit from that, too. Is that are you still hearing that as a trend? Oh, 100 percent. And in fact, um, th this is what Sparebank did on the second of on the third of January. It literally blindsided the market by saying uh, we're now digitizing physical gold, putting it on the trustless blockchain. And what they did that 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 actually is placing a gram price of gold to be exchanged for commodities that. that and, and let's face it, two thirds of the world. 3.8 billion people, two, two thirds of the world, we're like 1.8 billion, um, are literally the main producers, consumers of commodities. 
No one trusts the dollar. So you, it's been weaponized and they all recognize that. Russia, uh, Russia, China, all the BRICS countries want to de-dollarize. You can't do it overnight because you shoot yourself in the foot. But by digitizing, by using these, these un, over, well, overvalued dollars to buy physical grams, which are completely discounted, what you're doing is essentially creating a currency. And, and, and obviously, the more that happens, probably the higher the price will be. But when you think of liquidity, and, and, and we're talking about liquidity, when you look at the oil, the gas market, the commodity markets, we're talking 12,000 billion, 12,000 billion in size. There's potential liquidity. And then people say, well, there's not gold. There's no way you, there's, gold is not liquid enough. Oh, yeah, it is at the right price, at the right price. And I think that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing this change in behavior. We've never seen a competing central bank openly say, we're now taking physical gold and we're going to gram price all commodities in grams. What that's going to do for silver? When you price silver in gold grams, not dollars, what price is silver? I have no idea, Craig. It's not a, uh, a gold-silver ratio of 85 or anything like that. I would imagine it'll drop that ratio down some. Um, <laughs> to God's given ratio, which I think Bill Halter says is 12 to 1. Something like that. No, again... This is the this is the longer term proposition. Um, as you learn more about you know, the metals in the monetary system, and then learn more about the history of the pricing scheme, you begin to realize how the price is has been managed to this level. You mentioned earlier about gold versus crude oil. I'd say the only reason that they almost still kind of match up is because they price crude oil the same way. You know, and, and the crude oil producers aren't can't be happy about that either. And so all of this kind of epical change is happening, you know, as as you know, as we enter 2023 and those changes usually happen gradually and they've been happening gradually since really the great financial crisis that kind of woke up all these parties to, you know, that the dollar end game was kind of gradually upon us. But the COVID thing and the free money and the trillions of dollars of new cash combined with what happened uh, last year at the onset of the Ukraine war, where, you know, the, the biggest weekend of the year, the biggest news really of the year was that weekend of first weekend of March when the U.S. kicked Russia out of SWIFT and seized all their foreign currency, their foreign held currency reserves. That was the biggest weekend of the year. And that that took that epical change and kind of gave it a shove forward. And and that's why, again, may, you know, there's been money to be made playing the fiat game over the last 10 years. And if you've been in anybody like me that's been invested in gold and the mining shares and stuff like that have had an opportunity cost we've had to pay, you know, where we could have just been owning Tesla and Apple and, you know, and making all these fiat dollars. Um, but I don't know if that opportunity cost is going to be the same going forward. Um, I think now that that change is being sped forward, uh, it really means that people, if you've not are currently holding some physical metal, either in your hands or at Kinesis or, you know, some vault in some place, whatever, if you don't currently have some physical metal, if you've been waiting for the time to get involved, just look around you, read the headlines, uh, educate yourself. And I think you'll decide, yeah, maybe this is a time I should start kind of you know, buying again, what a great platform Kinesis is. Just go on there and buy $500 a month. You know, just take $500 a month and just whether it prices up or down, just start buying some. Um, it's a great platform for doing that. And, and again, diversify out of dollars into some physical metal because you know the direction this is headed um, because that's the way it's always headed in the past. And again, you can certainly read that, you know, if, you, if you're paying attention, you can certainly see it coming again. 